All right. So welcome to our uh, bi-weekly East Side Wrap meeting, where we'll be discussing the impact of homelessness on the East Side of Santa Barbara. Um, I'm Landon Rank, I'm the Associate Director with SB Act. I see a few new names uh, on our Zoom today, so if, if everyone wouldn't mind, it'd be great if you could introduce yourselves in the chat window. Um, and I want to recognize we have Mayor Rouse with us today, um, as well as several others from city and county staff. So just to begin, a uh, general announcement, um, reminder that we, we've had quite a bit of rain over the last weekend, I think everyone knows, and so uh, it does impact uh, the where people are staying um, and, and people are moving quite a bit during these rainy periods. Um, and so I'll, I'll let uh, Odin and the past team share in a minute about uh, what they opened up more over the, the course of the weekend, but we also had the warming centers open on the uh, several evenings up through the 6th. Um, and then additional extended outreach. So actually, why don't we start, if I could just pass it over to the PATH team, could you share a little bit about what you've been doing during the inclement weather? Gladly, I can give a little bit of an update. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Owen Dela. I research with PATH Santa Barbara. Uh, with the past two weeks, uh, we uh, do the storm warnings. We've been doing extensive outreach. Uh, on the days before the storm, uh, last Friday and last Wednesday, um, we hit the underpasses on South Milpas, um, Caesar Cesar Chavez, Elisos, Garden, uh, and uh, interacted with all the folks uh, over there. We got a pretty good donation of uh, rain ponchos and reflective blankets and handed those to individuals while also uh, informing people of the path inclement weather beds opening up at each of those times. Uh, so for all the folks who were uh, not interested to in going into path for the shelter for the shelter and instead applied for a higher ground, uh, they were taken care of uh, at least for uh, uh, the rain ponchos and notified of the warming centers as well. Um, during each of the nights for the warming center, I was informed that we actually had, uh, we were either at capacity or one or two beds, uh, at one or two beds just below that. So we had a very, very good turnout, uh, sheltering folks from the storm that a ways. Uh, outreach wise, I did get one new enrollment into the outreach, uh, case management program and actively working with this individual, uh, towards, uh, their stated goals of getting into medical detox, getting back with their with to uh with their doctors, and you know just working on getting back off uh back onto their feet and off the streets. Um, for these next few weeks, we will continue going out uh to uh waterfront district, lower east side, uh, south Memphis as well, just to interact with the businesses and introduce ourselves, and then. Uh, just continue with uh, building rapport with the individuals who are showing up and new. Uh, I've seen a few new faces out on the east side, so we'll be working on reintroducing introducing, uh, path services and county services in general uh, to those individuals. But uh, that's all that I've got right now. Uh, if anyone else on the team wants to hop in, by all means, but that's all from outreach. Thank you, Odin. And we appreciate all the PATH staff who had to work a little overtime um, over the weekend. And uh, on that same note, um, I'd like to hear from Good Samaritan and CityNet as well, because they both were working extended hours through the weekend to do some uh, weather warning outreach. So let's go to our Good Samaritan team, maybe on IES if you can. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> um, I. For ARPA, we have been really focusing on the last couple weeks on this tumultuous weather um, and really focusing on let, letting people know when we have the warming shelter, when we were activating, all that good stuff. Um, we were able to really support our, our clients that were a little bit service resistant to go into um, shelter. So we were able to really support their process and getting them like all the ponchos, the waters, the hygiene kits, anything to really keep them as dry as possible. Thank you, Anna. And then our CityNet team, can we hear from you? Good 
not sure I see anybody from City Unit on the call. Yeah, I actually don't, I don't know that they're here. We'll circle back if they pop in later. Um, we can um, say that we, we know that they were also out and about making the rounds and uh, we recognize the downtown uh, waterfront weekend team uh, for their help transporting people uh, to, sh to area shelters or offering uh, warming center locations. So um, we do, we, we acknowledge them for that and we'll do that again, um, even though they're not here today. This is on ice again. Uh, Liz, you just reminded me. Uh, sorry, it's been a long week. Um, we were able to um, stay over uh, as the week uh, progressed, and we stayed over on Friday uh, for overtime with my entire team. We also worked on Saturday vigilant. Uh, we were there just so many hours trying to make sure that people were in higher ground. Uh, so we were able to probably reach um, maybe like 24 hours of overtime just to make sure that people knew uh, safe spaces to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was part of those text conversations. And yeah, the all all of the outreach teams are busy out in the field over the weekend. So we are grateful for all of them. And yeah, it was a very that. wet weekend. Yeah. So hopefully y'all get some rest this weekend. I think uh, I think a couple of us are paying for it now. A week later we we have the sniffles. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah we do. Hope rest. everybody has a quick, yeah. yeah, get some rest. Hope it's a quick recovery. We have a couple of other outreach teams on the call, and we'll we'll come back to you all as well. But I wanted to um, also just share a general announcement of good news. Um, we talked about this on yesterday's State Street Wrap call as well. Uh, and you may have read about this in the newspaper, but Mayor Rouse and City Council did approve uh, the signing of a lease for a property at 621 Chapala um, for uh, uh, the purpose of trying to open a, a daytime navigation and workforce development center for people experiencing homelessness. So this is right downtown between Coda and Ortega Street. Um, it still has another hoop to go through. Uh, there's the planning commission. We'll need to uh, review this project before we can actually open it up as a, an open drop-in center. Um, However, in the meantime, that the space is available and we'll be able to, once we, we are starting to move in, then we'll be able to start taking advantage of it for meetings and uh, being able to host some of our homelessness um, coordination groups there. Um, so again, thank you to our city council and everyone who showed up in support. I don't know, Mayor Rouse, if you wanna say anything about this as well. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Lynn. And this was uh, a, a big effort, a big lift by uh, certainly Barbara Anderson, along with Liz Stotts, and moving forward to get this thing to where it is right now. Uh, we still have some community uh, confidence to make sure that we we embrace and we understand what the concerns are, address those. Uh, I think this is going to be a Frankly, I think it's going to be an upgrade for the neighborhood, certainly an upgrade for our services, along with taking the pressure off of other areas where we've done navigation, like the library or the park, or whatever. We have a, a, a where we're going to have all of our, uh, our, our, our providers in one space and be able to really handle clients in a more professional, uh, I, I think a more direct way that's going to be a, a big help, along with our property storage, our cooperation with animal control, giving people a real opportunity to move into services that uh, they may or may not have had confidence themselves in doing before. So uh, this is a pretty exciting step. So we'll have to say, get to our CUP planning commission, uh, get everything, uh, get our build out done and uh, move in and go. And also, well, thank you again. Uh, I think uh, SB Act uh, downplays their a critical role in in their, you know, in making this happen too. So, big kudos to SB Act for uh, helping find this location and for helping bring all the service providers together. That will be um, a huge benefit to our community. Thanks, Liz. And we know just after this last weekend, how beneficial it will be to have a space for people to go during the daytime, even just from an inclement weather perspective. So in addition to all the other benefits, I think uh, we, we really see that this week in particular. So 
So great job all around. Again, thank you. I know several of you on this call spoke in, in support at City Council, um, and we're really, really hopeful that, that will help to reduce homelessness citywide. All right. So we'll just go back to uh, general check-ins from our outreach teams. Um, Danielle, I see you on the call from uh, the YMCA. Um, I don't know if you want to give any updates from the uh, youth navigation. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of outreach. Our outreach program coordinator, Brittany, has been doing a great job of connecting to UCSB, SBCC. Um, our IV CES entry point is officially open. So we will have two staff members at the, what is the Ala Vista location? St. George Youth Center. Um, and it's actually also gonna be a drop-in center for 18 to 24 year olds as well. So they can go there, get a meal, get some clothes. Um, we're working on, building that up but yesterday was the day one yesterday was day one of um our new entry point um yeah and then we're going to be doing outreach out in isla vista if anyone has clients who are in golita isla vista um, you can refer them there to get services because i know transportation is difficult for a lot of our clients um and that's i think that's the main update we're doing a lot of intakes getting a lot of clients um when at the Eta Pack, it's in, but we've been really just increasing our outreach. And that's it. Great, thanks, Danielle. And we saw your team in the news, I think earlier in January, just a, a one year celebration of the opening of the East Side Navigation Center for um, homeless youth. Yes, so that's a pleasure to here. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't see Joao on the call, um, so maybe Liz, I don't know if you have any updates you want to share just about uh, city outreach. Um, I don't have any um, off the top of my mind. I was looking for Joao, but it looks like he might be out on the field. Uh, they have been uh, busy for, you know, because of the rain, just like the rest of us. So um, they were out and about. Um, you know, going in advance of the rain, warning people of the upcoming storms uh, and making sure that people knew that if they were in a creek or an area prone to flooding, that they were at risk. And with, um, you know, with PD made sure that those areas were cleared so that no lives were at risk during the rain. And as usual, if there are any uh, encampments or areas of concern, um, I'll post the uh, reporting link in a second. Thanks, Liz. Um, and if Joao were here, he would want us to keep making a plug for the SB Connect app. So I'm gonna put a link in the chat window just a reminder that this is the easiest way to report um, whether it's an individual need and encampment in a place where it shouldn't be uh, a fire fire hazard, anything along those lines, illegal dumping. Um, it can all go through, funneled through this one app and then the information can get relayed to the appropriate party. All right. So I think with that, we'll go ahead and open it up for uh, questions or concerns from the community. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Happy Friday. Uh, glad everybody weathered the storm. I know we we did. Um, but just want to acknowledge, wow, the last three weeks on Kazik is um, we're seeing some good work and um want to just give a shout out to our cops I mean we're seeing a lot more police presence and I think it's helping deter the drug lords that have been hanging out um I know there's still this blue van that I know the cops peek in there every now and then that's um on the corner of Noble and Kasik. um but I Again, whatever we're doing, it's working. And so I just want to applaud everybody and um, and again, recognize the cops. I'd like to host them for breakfast or something because it's just they deserve um, some recognition. So thank you. you no, know, Commander Katz has been with us today, but we'll pass that along. Thank you. And this area remains a high priority for the city. So we will continue all the efforts that we have been going, even though things have improved and we appreciate that feedback, uh, we are committed to this area being of high priority for us. So we will continue, but thank you for the positive feedback.
That actually reminded me, uh, Liz Adams, is there a cleanup happening this weekend? That's actually a better question for JV. It has all the, all the info on all the cleanups. I can jump in as well. Oh. This is Gabby speaking. I can jump in um, if JV isn't able to. Uh, we're hoping to have a cleanup on Monday um, of this week, the 12th. Um, but due to illness on my end, I'm not sure if I'll be able to make it, but I, we're almost hopefully positive that it will be able to go through on Monday and we'll get a really big group of students to be out there and cleaning up the area. Thank you, Gabby. Hope you feel better. Other questions or concerns from the community? Just FYI, Landon and uh, Al joined the call. Yeah. Al, since you're here, would you be willing to share a, a city net update from the rains and then also just for the east side in general? Yeah, definitely. Um, our team during the rain and storm scenario were able to um, provide outreach um, before, during, um, and after. Um, I you know, John and Olivia specifically aren't on this call right now. They'll be jumping on at 11 today um, for our nights, uh, weekends shift. But I actually had them come in a little early along with a couple other staff last week specifically um, to go through the underpasses, provide any support, offer, um, you know, shelter, even the emergency uh, at the, what was it, the Wake Center. Um, you know, we were opening that and offering, we gave multiple rides to individuals that were, you know, in the storm. We focused on a lot of the creeks. Um, yesterday, you know, John had mentioned he, he hadn't been through the beach area, through the east side in the parks, and it was so clear, like there was no one out there. He was like, he hadn't seen something like that in a very long time. Um, but that means many people were, you know, getting into shelter or going into these warming centers. Um, the one concern that was brought just, you know, from the city and us is that definitely because we know we have the, the services out there to get people into the warming centers and shelters that we want to make sure we were able to activate um, at times of need, which happened. But we've been putting a focus on the east side in the Cacique area uh, between our outreach staff that is really out there and available in the Cacique area. I'd have to say now like four to five days a week because the amount of uh, support and coordination and collaboration we have with PATH and their staff. Um, because we have the city bits there ha that are all filled up right now, um, my team is there practically every day to support our clients um, in collaboration with PATH for case management. Um, and at the same time, we're able to provide the support specifically for Cacique on that street, coordinate with Joao and the city, you know, when they're doing the cleanups and obviously the support by PD, you know, um, so when I jumped on, so I apologize for when I had, we're getting two people housed today. So I had to get some cashier checks and all that stuff. So we're getting, we're making some people, they're making it home today. Um, so that's why I ran behind. So it was definitely a good, a good reason. But I'm hearing Susie um, and I can't, and you're a part of this and this whole team here is a part of it. You community members and business representatives are a huge part of this because without your guys' voice, you know, um, we wouldn't keep on coordinating and building this village that we are that's so strong to get this all together. So between you guys getting the outreach information to us, for us to be able to provide that outreach from there, contact PD if it's not following through. From there, the city jumping on top of it to provide, the, you know, Joao and them connecting with the resources to clean the areas. Like, that's our process. It, we're seeing it slowly come together, right? And then as you guys are now seeing on the street, um, there has been an impact in a positive way. Um, but I get to what Liz said is that we're not stopping. We're going to continue. Um, and with the rains, I always see it as a, a great opportunity to get individuals into shelter or accept services because it's struggling for them out in the cold, out in the rain. And yeah, they're tough cookies, right? You know, that's why sometimes they're out there for so long. But this type of weather actually weathers them, right? And so for us, we kind of, you know, do our best in a positive way to pounce on that, you know, and take advantage of saying, hey, let's go get into the shelter. Let's go check out Path of the Warming Center today. They're opening up the doors, you know, and um, just applaud to Path in the city 
for opening up the doors earlier um, this past storm to get people out of the weather, you know? So, um, yeah, but we, we provide a significant amount of outreach and support. And so for you guys in the community, um, you know, you can always reach out to me directly. Um, we have a really great thread uh, with the city ambassadors and the city of Santa Barbara um, that we were updating throughout the day for specific areas like the library, like some underpasses, some specific businesses that there were individuals standing out. So they were to get they were able to get us that information quickly, and then we were able to follow up on it, you know, um, in a prompt time. So uh, what we're doing right now um, does seem to be working, but this is uh, the work never stops. So thank you all. I did want to yeah, also I did want to also mention I forgot to I think it was last week we did have a homeless individual throw a rock onto our car. Um, that broke the windshield. So um, I'll, I, I do appreciate you saying that it does take a village. And um, and so the more we get these individuals into support and or um, kind of off the street, it, it does help as well from a safety perspective. Susie, was that something you reported to the police department or would you like me to follow up? Um, I believe our safety team did, but um, I, I'll double check on that, Liz, and get back to you. Okay. Mayor Ruff? Yeah, real briefly, I just want to follow up on what Al had to say and what we've been talking about in general is what we're doing on, on the Cacique area and whatnot is not just a surge. It's an ongoing plan and a program because as we try to develop things like this new navigation center, we have to regain the public trust and confidence that we're moving forward, which we are, but that's not always up the perception out there. So the battles that we have, for example, even the housing authority project in Samarkand, which has nothing to do with the shelter or, or that's a, it's a housing project, but the public perception isn't always fitting of what we're doing out there. So we will keep our efforts on Kasik. We're not going to just be there for a couple of months and then move on. We'll keep our efforts going with City Nets, SB Act, and all our partners um, and keep improving. And we, we have to show incremental improvements. And then what I've always told people, too, is we need to celebrate our small victories. I think it's really important that we communicate out what we're doing and why we're doing it and the effect we're having. It's not always evident to everyone, but if we can't let the reputation uh, or uh, a perception create a gravity that's going to drag the program back down. We have to keep moving forward, but we have to communicate out exactly what it is we're doing. Thank you, Mayor couldn't, couldn't agree more. And so you got a shout out in the chat window as well as just an appreciation for the um, cleaner streets as well. Anything else from the community? Well, thank you, everyone. I think there's a lot of appreciation just for collaboration today, and I really do think that's that's kind of the theme of this week. It feels like whether it was the the rains or the Jason Navigation Center, all of these things are really emphasizing us working together. Um, and I think the more and more we're able to do that, the better. So, again, I just appreciate you all, and uh, we'll have the service providers stick around, but community members will say goodbye for now and have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone.